in hand. The chemistry of inflammation is driven by fat. The chemistry that causes inflammation to occur is a fat process, specifically the fats we call, get ready for this, essential fatty acids, EFAs. Sugar starts the process, but fatty molecules, particularly EFA molecules. Now, they're tweaked a little bit, it's true, but these tweaked EFAs are responsible for, for better or worse. You need an inflammatory process. I'm not just ripping on inflammation here. You need it. But for better or worse, EFAs, essential fatty acids, are what drive the inflammatory process. And this is why nutritionists talk so much about this balance of omega-6s to omega-3s. You probably heard this. Oh, you need a certain amount of omega-6s to omega-3s. The thinking being, and it's a bit flawed, I believe, the thinking being that if you have too much omega-6 fats, you'll get more inflammation because omega-6 fats, from, uh, primarily from corn, which is everywhere in your fish, in your meat, in your poultry, certainly in French fries and other so-called fried only in vegetable oil. I love when McDonald's did that as if that was a good thing. Only, we only use vegetable oil, toxic vegetable oil for our French fries. We're swimming in the stuff. We're drenched in it, primarily from corn, but also soy, safflower, sunflower. These, are, these omega-6s are tweaked into inflammatory chemicals. The omega-3s, which are much rarer, those are tweaked into anti-inflammatory chemicals. Omega-3s are much rarer than the omega-6s in nature. Guess what else? Omega-6s are much rarer in the, I'm sorry, omega-3s are much rarer in the body than the omega-6s. The omega-6s, there's way more omega-6s in the body. Omega-6 is the primary EFA in the body. How is that? Isn't that weird? Check this out. The inflammatory fat, so-called, is the one that you have more of, way more of, than the anti-inflammatory fat. That's because to the body, inflammation is key. It's important. It's vital. It keeps us alive. It's way more important than anti-inflammation. Let me say that again. To the body, the inflammatory process is way more fundamental to survival than the anti-inflammatory process. You say, what? I always thought it's anti-inflammation. I need more omega-3s. Not a no. Inflammation is survival. It keeps us alive. Remember, it's a beaver's dam. It's protective. Inflammation's a good thing. It's the chronic, long-term, under-the-radar inflammation. That's the problem. It's the chronic, long-term response to damage or response to invader. That's the problem. We need inflammation. Inflammation's important. It's more important than anti-inflammation. And in the body and in nature, it's way easier to get omega-6s. But in keeping with the proud tradition of the human race in screwing up our food supply over the so comprehensively and completely, it's 100% different than it was a mere century ago nearly 100% different. We have done the same thing to uh, the fats that we've done to everything else. And so now we have this glutton, this glut of omega-6 fats, and it's a serious problem. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. We're back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about anything we're talking about here, if you're a diabetic in need of a, in need of a hand, not that you need a hand from me, but if you have questions about perhaps getting off your anti-diabetic meds, if you have any, any health questions, health challenges, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you're interested in purchasing any of our Truth Treatment products, please go to truthtreatments.com and take a specially long look at our Retinol 5% Gel. The I I, reason I made it a 5% gel is, first of all, because you need a lot of this stuff. And I've been working with Retinol since 1983, since I was an intern, a pharmacy school intern. I've been working with Retinol, and I'm telling you, I've seen the most amazing things happen with this stuff for acne, for anti-aging in terms of wrinkles, for evening the tone of the skin. It is aggressive. It is strong, but our Retinol 5% gel is nowhere near as strong as the 0.05% Retin-A, or retinoic acid, I should say, that you get on a prescription. I designed it to be equipotent, to have the same potency as the 0.05% prescription version. So you're, in essence, getting the same strength as you would 
for a doctor's office prescription version of retinoic acid. That's what 5% retinol is designed to be equivalent to, but not just that. You're also getting a big old dose, a high dose of fat-soluble vitamin C, and that's not in your retinoic acid that you get at the drugstore. So it's equipotent to the drugstore product, plus vitamin C, and no preservative, no fragrance, no filler, no wax, no emulsifier, and emulsifiers, that's a whole nother, uh, whole nother element of toxicity in skincare products, the emulsifier, which is in your all creams and lotions. You can find out all about it truth at truthtreatments.com in addition to all our other truth treatment skin health products. From Western Australia, this is uh, the uh, Western Australia Children's Diabetes Research and Education Center for Research Excellence. Intense workouts are best for exercising diabetics. This is really important. It's not just diabetics that benefit from intense workouts. It's the intensity of a workout that creates the biochemical change. The body is really well equipped to handle stresses and it will suck them up. It will absorb them. It will assimilate stresses without making a change unless those stresses are short and quick and intense. The intensity is what accounts for the benefits of exercise. So walking around the block while it's not a bad thing to do is not the kind of exercise you need to do if you're a diabetic and you want to create changes in your biochemistry or if you're anybody and you want to create changes in your biochemistry, if you want to anti-age, if you want to build muscle, if you want to lose weight, if you want to have a, uh, improve cardiovascular health, or if you want to improve metabolic, i.e. sugar health, you need the intense, vigorous, quick workout. And another benefit, in addition to the fact that it works, another benefit of intense, quick workouts is the quick part. You can be in and out of the gym in 10 minutes. If you have to stay in the gym for half an hour, or if you're doing a, a set of crunchers, abdominal crunchers, and you can do a hundred of them, you're doing them wrong. If you do a crunch right, an abdominal crunch, and those are the best way to, ways to build muscle, abdominal muscles, is by doing crunching exercise where you squeeze the lower part of your abdominals and the upper part of your abdominals together. That's called a cruncher. You want to do it till where it hurts and where you do it slowly. You want to be able to do five of them. And at the fifth one, you could barely do it. And it's the same with curls or any other workout. If you're running, if you're on a treadmill, run for a minute, 60 seconds, but run quick uh, at, at full speed or whatever, as fast as you can go for 60 seconds. If you're just jogging or you're on the bike, I see people on the exercise bike at the gym, they're on it for an hour, just kind of leisurely, you know, pedaling, watching TV. Not that that's a bad thing, but that's not, that's not how you get the benefits of exercise. Likewise, by the way, brain exercise. If you want to be smart, if you want to memorize something, Spend just 10 minutes studying something, but study it intensely, and then stop. And you'll find that if you try to cram in a whole bunch of information, you study really intensely for 10 minutes, and then you stop, you'll find that at the end of the day, or when you try to pick, open up your book again, you're studying again, you know more than you had any idea that you knew. Because the brain absorbs things, and the body absorbs things, and the body creates changes with intensity, not not uh, long, low-level kinds of exercise. Same with inflammation. You get an inflammatory response, a, a defensive response when there's a, an obvious one, when there's a major event. The minor events, they initiate subclinical inflammation, subclinical responses that we don't even notice. And that is really the problem. We don't notice. And no, you know, I'm not beating anybody up here because I'm just as bad as anybody else. We don't notice things until they're too late. And this is why you have to have, apply a little common sense to how we live our lives. Because you're not going to necessarily notice it because the body is so forgiving until it's too late. By the time you see the cancer, by the time you get the, the heart symptoms, the cardiovascular symptoms, it's been going on a long time. Nobody's just sitting around minding their own business perfectly healthy and boom, they get cardiovascular disease or cancer or anything else. There's always comorbidities as well, things that are diseases that are happening alongside your primary disease. They call that comorbidities. I'm fascinated with comorbidities. Psoriasis occurs with arthritis. Diabetes occurs with heart disease. Cancer occurs with almost anything. People who have rosacea are more likely to have Alzheimer's disease later on in their lives. These are called comorbidities. These are uh, diseases that happen together, and it's a major clue to how the breakdown process occurs in the body. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Let's go to Oregon and welcome Carl to the bright side. What's up, Carl? Hey, 
Hey, uh, Benjamin, I want to contribute to the conversation first, then I have an important question. Sure. Uh, yeah, I worked at tournament two years ago, the professional tournament that was sponsored by the Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Okay. And uh, called Lions Fest. So it was fun. But at the end of uh, the event, you know, they gave us... Uh, Did they uh, serve fried chicken to everybody and yeah. KFC, KFC and right. Coke for everybody? Sponsored yeah, by oh, KFC They had a good Coke. spread of sandwiches, salads, did all kinds of nice stuff. They took care of us really well. But they all gave us, like, hints, like little brochures and things about Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Okay. If you want to be a part of it as well. So, you know, they... <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that that's uh, my contribution there. They, they uh, yeah, they, they work in covert ways to... to to bring in lots and lots and lots of revenue. It's, it's very much a business. Of course it's a business. There's CEOs yeah. that need to make get their bonuses. Right. The whole thing. All the, you know, you ever notice how every time there's a, there's a foundation, the disease rate goes through the roof? Like the heart, right. Right, the heart Association started, I don't know, the 40s or 50s. Since then, heart disease has quadrupled or quintupled. Same with the Diabetes Association and the American Cancer Association. The, the most surefire way to start an epidemic is start a foundation. And you're right. guaranteed have everybody have that disease. You ever wonder yeah. about that? What's going on? What am I missing? Am I missing something here, Carl? <laughs> All right, Truth Raider. I want to. I want to get some calls here. Anything else? Well, I you got a me? question. Oh, a question. go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I have this. I don't know if this is a precursor to cardiovascular disease or cardiopulmonary disease or what this is, but I'll get occasionally. I'll get an ache, like a pain in my jaw, like it's like it was in my yeah. teeth. Yeah. And then it goes That's, into my neck, got and it. then it goes down into my chest, and it kind of has a feeling kind of akin to you have like a spoon of peanut butter, and you need a peanut, a spoon I, of peanut I butter. I totally know what you're saying. Here, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold you over, and then okay. I'll, 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 we'll finish up here. But while we're on the break, I want you to think about this, okay, Carl? All right. What's the one thing, one part of your body that goes from your jaw to your chest to your big toe back up again to your brain all the way around and around and around your body don't answer the question yet we'll get to uh, we'll uh, we'll get you when we come back from our break all don't right. go away carl all right that farms is ben you're listening to the bright side if you're on hold hang tight we'll get to you when we come back from our break all right we're back on the bright side my farms is Ben. Got lines open for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, the truth treatment products, longevity products, 844-236-6010. From the journal Diabetes, a high-fat diet leads to epi... Uh, high-fat diet in pregnancy leads to epigenetic changes in the offspring. Oh, my goodness. The changes affect metabolic pathways regulated by gut hormones, making adult offspring more susceptible to obesity and insulin resistance, the precursor to type 2 diabetes. Mom eats the wrong fats. Babies have a higher chance of developing diabetes. This is the science of epigenetics that Dr. Wallace has been talking about for years. Just one of those subjects that if you understand how the body works, you don't need to wait for the New York Times to affirm its veracity and its importance when it comes to health. Epigenetics is just common sense if you understand how the body works. Genes turn on and off, like Christmas tree lights. Nobody has it, with some exceptions, nobody has to have a genetic health issue. Genes turn on and off. There are some genes that are semi-permanent, and I'm not convinced they're permanent either. Even eye color may not be permanent. You know, they do studies on, hypnotic, uh, on subjects who are being hypnotized or on subjects who have multiple personality syndrome or multiple, multiple personality disease, and they find that the different personalities are under hypnosis. They can change so-called permanent markers. I've read, and I have not seen anything t t definitively, but I've read that even eye color can change, or diabetic markers can change under hypnosis and uh, under uh, uh, in multiple personality disease by when different personalities can have diabetes or not have diabetes in the same person. So I'm not even convinced about this whole... Uh, uh, the permanency of genes, but say 20% of our genes are permanent, the other 80% are not, and they can be m turned on and off like Christmas tree lights, depending on the environment the cell is sitting in, specifically the nutritional environment. Okay, Carl, the truth raider, what's the one thing that runs from your jaw to your, to your chest to anywhere else where you're feeling pain? 
Yeah, specifically in those regions. What is the one, no, Carl, stop. What is the one thing inside your body 